Now, when I first picked up the Ryzen 5600X, I kind of sulked and moaned a little bit because honestly, it wasn't what I wanted. But after taking some time to get a little closer, it might just be what you need. All right, all right, before we get into this, I know, you know, we all know what's going on with the limited availability of these Ryzen 5000 CPUs. It's the same thing with the RTX 3000 series, and it's the same thing with the Radeon 6000 series of GPUs. You can call it paper launch, you can call it whatever you want. I'm not gonna argue with you. It's just really hard to get your hands on one. Now on the release day of the 5000 CPUs, there was one SKU that seemed to be in a more less limited stock availability, and that was the Ryzen 5 5600X. This is a Ryzen 5 6 core 12 thread CPU based off of Zen 3 architecture. Depending on exactly who you talk to, this may either be the bargain of all bargains or maybe overpriced when you compare it to the same CPU from previous generations. Now, besides just testing the CPU itself, something that motivated me to get this video done was actually an announcement from ASRock and a video by the hardware Canucks that let me know about said announcement from ASRock. So if you know anything about the new 5000 series CPUs, they were designed to run on B550 or X570 motherboards. And even though they share the same AM4 socket type as previous Ryzen models, AMD has stated that your older motherboards like the B450, X470, etc., wouldn't be able to use these new sockets. Then they came out and said, okay, we will allow BIOS upgrades, but that will be later on in the 2021, or we'll kind of just leave it up to the exact vendor. And as of the time of me shooting this video, ASRock is the first vendor that will allow you to update your BIOS with a beta BIOS that will allow you to use these Ryzen 5000 CPUs on certain B450 and X470 motherboards. Now, I don't know how well you can see it back there, but that's my Spud small form factor PC that I did earlier this year. And it actually features an ASRock B450 motherboard. I checked the website and it was one of the ones that was included in the beta BIOS. I instantly downloaded and updated the BIOS and boom, now I can test the 5600X. Now, if you wanna know more about the Spud PC build, I'll definitely leave more information down in the description, plus a link to the actual video where I built this PC. But the main component that I thought would make this video even more interesting is that I used a Ryzen 1600 AF in that build. Now, the Ryzen 1600 is actually, essentially a Ryzen 2600. It's built off the Zen Plus 12 nanometer architecture, which actually puts it in line with second gen Ryzen more than its first gen name counterpart, the Ryzen 1600. Now I was just gonna put that head to head against the 5600, but my good friend, John of John's Films, man, make sure you go check his channel out, especially if you're in the DaVinci Resolve. He is killing it in that game. He said he had a Ryzen 5 3600 that was just chill that I could check out, throw it in the mix so we can really see what type of gains you were getting going from generation to generation to generation. Now, that's been a whole lot of me running my mouth so far in this video. Let's go to some super chill, laid back, easy benchmarking, and then I'll see you on the other side. Now, as we jump into the benchmarks, all testing was done on my small form factor build Spud with the system specs currently shown on the screen. Starting with everyone's favorite Cinebench R20, the generational leaps are just massively impressive, especially the single core gains. To test the thermals, I ran 8 of 64 for 10 minutes. You can see that even though the 56X is a more powerful chip, it ran cooler than the previous generation 3600. Moving away from the synthetics, I put it to work in a real world scenario, using the free version of DaVinci Resolve so all the render power is CPU bound, I downloaded some red camera footage and exported a 1 minute 4K file. While none of these chips would be what I would recommend for true professional work, the 5600 powered through with a reasonable speed and a much better experience working in the timeline. Moving on to games, I did the majority of my tests in the 1080p, but I wanted to see how some of the newer AAA titles held up in 1440p, which this CPU 
CPU and GPU combos should be able to handle. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we see the 5600X take its rightful seat on the throne, but honestly, I was really impressed with how well the 3600 still performs. Same with the Division 2. The jump from the 3600 to 5600X is nice, but the 3600 smokes its predecessor. In Borderlands and 1080p, after multiple runs on the built-in benchmark tool, the 3600 actually takes the small victory, with 1440p performance being nearly identical across the board. GTA 5 paints a similar picture with the 5600X being on top, but only by the narrowest of margins over the previous generation. CSGO brings the narrative back to the table with massive leaps and gains using the 1080p Pro settings and the in-game benchmark. 470 FPS just sounds silly. Wow, man. Honestly, I am super, super impressed with the overall gain that you're getting going from generation to generation to generation. But honestly, that's not really that hard to understand. AMD told us that Ryzen was gonna age like fine wine. And as we go longer and longer in this development cycle, we're really seeing not only the core clock gains, but the IPC gains really help these chips become big time players in the market space. Honestly, the Ryzen 5 5600X makes me super excited for the 5900X I'm hoping to get to replace in my main build. Oh man, I could just imagine it really flying in my system. When it came down to the synthetic benchmarks, there really wasn't much of a competition. I think people just really enjoy running Cinebench R20 and seeing what their numbers are. Of course, the multi-core numbers improved each time, but the boost in single core numbers from the 1600 AF to the 5600A, oh, man, it was a pretty night and day. And that showed itself in productivity. The little bit of time that I spent in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm using the free model here, so we really put the stress on the CPU with no GPU acceleration. It just seemed like it was a much better experience. I think rendering speeds are super overhyped in these benchmarking videos. Yes, if you go from rendering a video in an hour to rendering it in a couple of minutes, that definitely makes a huge improvement on your workflow. But what I really think is more important is how your system overall handles the actual working in the program, working with the files. Is there any lag when you're scrolling the timeline and chopping clips and doing Doing special effects, things like that, to me, is really more important in the lifetime and workflow of an editor. But yes, I understand rendering speeds also mean a little bit too, but it really gets overblown. You guys would be like, oh, I shave 30 seconds off of my renders, and if I extrapolate that, time's bruh. Come on, man. Now, when it comes to gaming, the numbers may not have shown massive improvements, but it was really the overall gameplay, the lack of stutters that really made it that much more of a dope gaming experience. Now, I apologize if I didn't test the game out that you like. If you like a specific game, leave it down below because I will be doing a video using the Ryzen 5 5600X with last gen's GPUs. Basically, the four that I have on hand, two from Team Green, two from Team Red, and we're gonna see what type of gameplay experience you can expect with a newer CPU and a last-gen GPU to let you know if you really need to upgrade or not. Now, to wrap it up, let's talk about the value of the 5600X, specifically compared to the 3600, which you can find on Newegg for like $220. You might be able to find used much cheaper. I'm always gonna go for getting the best bang for your tech dollars, and value is really important. And if you can save money on a 3600X and maybe put that into a better GPU, better RAM, then that makes it a super hard value for me to recommend the 5600X. But the actual performance boost that you get from the 5600X, plus the ability to use your older motherboards with more BIOS releases coming in the near future, I mean, that's really tough. I would love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Now, Intel might be throwing a wrench in this whole conversation as they just dropped the price of their six core 12 thread CPU to about $275, $25, 
cheaper than this? I don't know. Should I pick it up? You guys let me know, man. I haven't done an Intel build in years since my old 4770K video. Wow. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been some time since I've done an Intel build. I might have to pick that up, put them head to head and see what's good. I'm gonna get up out of here, man. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and never forget to holler at your boy.